today I want to speak about our amazing sponsor, V&J Auto Body. That's right. V&J Auto Body has now um, opted to be our primary sponsor here on the podcast, and we couldn't be happier. So V&J Auto Body is a shop that's been around for 40 years. It's a family-owned shop. It still is. Okay. Um, I Yours truly works there. I have worked there for nine years. I'm a manager and a writer. Um, we have a fantastic, dynamic uh, crew, right? professional in, in all ways. Myself and my partner have between us probably about 40 years combined experience in the insurance industry in various roles. Uh, the shop itself is a very progressive shop. And what I mean by that is a future forward-looking shop. Right, we have attained most major manufacturer certifications. All right, most recently, we just became Range Rover certified and Rivian. All right, we continue to move forward in that in that realm as well. All right, so uh, from a standpoint of being prepared to assist you, the public, in in every possible way when it comes to having your collision damage vehicle repaired and restored to pre loss condition. V&J Auto Body is the one place you need to be, all right? Um, the shop itself, we have some of the most highly trained technicians. We have the most advanced equipment, all right? And we are continually upgrading that and continually continuing the training, all right, for all people. And they really make the investment, folks. I mean, we're, we're sending guys across the country. Uh, the owners themselves, James Verone and Chandler, are always attending various industry um, industry seminars, and, and uh, various talking heads and, and folks that are intimately involved in the industry, right, so that we stay ahead of the curve and we know what's, what's happening before it, before it happens, all right? We know what's coming. So we're prepared, all right? We are prepared both intellectually, technically, all right, and also business-wise, all right? And the one thing you can always count on with V&J Auto Body is we're going to represent your interests and not the interests of the insurance company. All right, and we're going to be with you all the way from start to finish. All right, our professional office staff, all right, they're, they're of claim rep quality. All right, and uh, the girls uh, do a phenomenal job. They really know uh, the insurance industry inside out, all right, and they can make sure that your claim gets reported, recorded, and, uh, and, and handled the right way from the beginning. All right, so you don't have to worry about that, t- that part of the aggravation. All right, V&J is going to take care of all that for you. All right, V&J Auto Body, they are in Lindenhurst and can be reached at 631-226-0070. That's 631-226-0070. Of course, they are on our network at collisionservicenetwork.com. All right, but uh, V&J Auto Body, folks, if you're in the Babylon area, if you live in the town of Babylon, you're in that area, you certainly should be having your car repaired there. So remember, all right, if you get into an accident or you need to file an insurance claim, Give the folks over at V&J Auto Body a call, 631-226-0070. They have you back. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode of the one and only Crash Course, where uh, we're helping all the folks out, right? You know our mantra, right? if you've been following us for a while now, that is, of course, we're giving you knowledge and information you need and can use and advice you can trust. Uh, we know how important that is today, right? You can't trust anything. Mass media, disinformation, misinformation, no information. The wizards of no are all around us, right? The brain trusts, they're always telling us how to do things and how to be and how to speak, all right? Not here though, all right? Here at Crash Course, we cut through all the minutia, all right? I like to say, listen to the things you don't want to listen to, and I read things you don't want to read. The cherry pick out what's important, and then we come here and we give it to you, right? Just like I did in the last episode where I told you about the recalls that were happening on all the Ford vehicles, right? The Explorers, the Aviator, all right, the F-150s, okay? So stuff like that, you know, we we like to get that out to the folks. Um, I know some of it might be, uh, excuse me, some of it might be, sorry about that, some of it might be, you know, common knowledge or you might be able to come across that in your, your daily life but we uh you know we know that the manufacturers they, they're not always uh, excited about letting you know about recalls all right but so we thought that was uh important so we got that out to the folks in the last episode so uh anyway moving right along uh like i said welcome everybody if you're new um you're new to the show if somebody told you about us or you're just skimming around in the uh social media world and you came upon uh this uh 
this uh, show, well, well, welcome. Now stick around, right? I always like to say you're going to be the smartest person in the room when it comes to you. Insurance, collision matters. All right, what do I mean by that? Well, you know, we, we all have to interact and deal with the insurance industry eventually in our lives, right? Especially according to Department of Transportation statistics, which say every 10 years, some of us are going to be an offender. Now, hopefully it's offender offender, right? God forbid. Um, and with respect to collision, well, you know, enough said on that, right? I mean, most of us, uh, we constantly... Cut. I just want to do something. Come on, man. I'm so, so, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Let me just look at this. Um... Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you're good. It's just that was bothering the fuck out of me. I had to fix that. It was bothering you? It was very... Yeah, yeah. Now it looks it so much better. Yeah, it's so much better. Hello? 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 All right. Um... Little interruption there. Oh, did I ever tell anybody? I, I, you know, I, I just, um, I'm getting older here. You gotta bear with me, okay? Some of this stuff flows off the top of your head when you get older, and other stuff just never seems to come to the surface. Hey, we're in the amazing studios here, Barone Media Incorporated, all right? This place is fantastic. I can't tell you what an amazing place this is, studio. We love it here. Uh, Anthony and his crew are just fantastic. Folks, if you if this is your thing, okay, if this is if this is what you're uh, if this is what you're doing, if this is what you're involved in, you gotta give these guys a call. All right, Barone Media, you gotta give them a call, let them explain to you what they can do for you, all right, and how they're gonna be able to help you, whether it's you know your private enterprise, your business, if it's some project and you just need this kind of help, all right, uh, you're trying to get more visibility, maybe brand recognition. All right, maybe you just want to strike out on your own and be a, be a new uh, new podcast, all right? And uh, maybe you got something that you want to share with the world. I don't know what it is, all right? Um, I'm, uh, I'm still feeling my oats through this. But uh, Barone Media, guys, uh, Incorporated, I can't say enough. These guys have been with us from the beginning. And, uh, you know, Anthony and his crew just do a fantastic job. They really help you ease into this. Uh, if you're a professional already and you just, you know, you're just looking to, you know, expand or you want to try somebody else, maybe you're not getting... You know, getting what you need out of where you are. All right, give these guys a call. Right, Barone Media Incorporated. Fantastic studio here. All right, it's uh, it's professional all around. All right, at at a at a really fair price. All right. Anyway, um, I digress. So, uh, what was I talking about? I was talking about the uh, what we do here. Right, collision insurance matters. All right, and also, like I said, educating the folks. All right. So, on the collision thing, hey, right? What can I say? None of us spend a lot of time thinking about it because it's always going to be the other guy, right? The other guy's going to have the accident. I'm a great driver. It's never going to happen to me, right? And I, I was saying that too until I got blasting, blasting the ass about two years ago and then had to get my hand on, operated on. I'm still paying for that now. Um, so, you know, you never know, folks. Right? You never know. And so that's why it's important that you educate yourself, okay? Because I know we're all educated about mechanical stuff, right? We did the man on the street thing when we were on the radio, and uh, you know we'll we'll do a little more of that hopefully someday down the road. But you know it's it's just um, it's funny, but it's not right. You ask people, hey, listen, you know you're you have a mechanic. I hear your brakes, man. They feel, they sound like they're grinding. Sounds like you need a brake job. You know uh, your camera's not working on your car. Your parking sensors went dead, right? Uh, you need an oil change. You need your tires. Well, all that stuff. I, I don't have to. I don't have to enumerate on that too far. All right, because we all, we all know what I'm talking about with that. All right, and everybody's got a guy with that, right? Oh, Uncle Vinny's been fixing my family's cars, you know, Uncle Joe's uh, auto repair, or, you know, Tricky Dick's auto repair. I mean, you know, um, mechanics fundamental or us. I mean, pick something, right? There's a, there's a ton of mechanic shops out there, even today, right? Despite, despite the downward pressure on that industry, right? And there is a lot of downward pressure on that uh, because of the, the technicalities and the, te and the uh, you know, the, the technical uh, platforms that are in these cars today, right? So a lot of downward pressure on the independent guys, right? A lot of them just aren't around anymore. Even so, right? They still have a solid following, right? The guys that are managing to hang on, and maybe maybe they made the investments where they had to, and and, the, and educated themselves. Point being is, we all know where to go, right? Because why? I've said this a thousand times. I'm going to say it again. That is a need to basis, right? You don't have a choice, folks. That car ain't running, you ain't going anywhere, right? Now, contrast that with collision, and, eh, you know, not really, right? Especially now, we find ourselves in economic peril right now, right? Um, at least I think so. <laughs> Hopefully everybody else is, is uh, sharing the same fate out there. I mean, listen, if you're blessed to be making a lot of money, 
I know there's a lot of money on Long Island, right? I mean, I don't have to tell you. I mean, you drive around. There's, you know, there's, there's cars that people drive here that you don't see anywhere else in the country. Um, and there's just, you know, a crap load of money, right? Shitload of money everywhere, right? We know that, right? You got Lloyd Harbor, Lloyd Neck, you got, you know, Bellport. Yeah, we all, we all the rich areas, the Hamptons. People got money everywhere, and then in between, people got money, right? I see people driving around in Sable, that, you know, downtown Sable, um, and they just got, you know, go screw yourself money. Great, fantastic, love it. That's the old fashioned American way. Work hard, hopefully you're working hard, right? I don't know, maybe you developed something, maybe you came up with a new patent, maybe you came up with a new product, uh, a new service, I don't know, whatever it is. Point being though, um, Collision wise, right? And the reason why I'm, I'm coming back around that when I said about making a lot of money, because a lot of people make a, a lot of money, right? Maybe they're not going to be as concerned, right? Eh, my car gets smacked, stuff like that, who cares? On, and then on the flip side of that, right? When, when I said we're in economic peril today, right? The economy's not in great shape. We're not on, we, you know, we're, the, the whole economy is sitting on sand, right? Forget what they're telling you out there, all right? It's all bullshit, okay? All bullshit, folks, okay? We're sitting on a sand pile, man, all right? And, uh, you know, sitting on inside an hourglass that's been turned upside down and that shit's just pouring through. All right, so um, it's not really that great. All right, and if you're average Joe like myself and, and, and what, well, what's ever left of average Joe on Long Island, I just got done saying all the money, then you know what I'm talking about, right? So you have a need to industry, right? Mechanical, even if you're on, if you're on the balls of your ass, right? If your car ain't running, man, you're, you're, you're scrambling, right? You're like, holy shit, I, I got to borrow money from Aunt Ann or Aunt, 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 Aunt Joe or Uncle Sam or somebody, Uncle Sam. You ain't getting shit out of Uncle Sam. Um, Uncle Johnny. Um, point being is, we all agree, man, if that car ain't running, you're screwed. All right? Come on. Yeah, I know, bicycle, you jump on the bus or something, that's funny. But nobody really wants to operate that way. Now, your car gets hit, all right? Uh, boom. Holy shit. You know, I need two doors, uh, my, my quarter panel's banged up, my, you know, my fender. But all of a sudden now, it's not that important, right? You get in the car in the morning, well, wait a minute, man, this fucking, this thing starts, it runs, it's safe, my lights all work. I, I think I'm going to live with that. And on top of that, you go make a claim to the insurance company, they take off your deductible, hopefully it's no more than $500, and you walk away with a... I don't know, three thousand dollar check. That's a lot of money in my world, all right. I'm sure it's a lot of money in a rich guy's world too. But point being is, for me, that's a lot of money, man. All right, that's going to pay some bills. That's going to put food on my on my table for a few weeks. A few weeks, people will probably laugh. What the hell is this guy eat steak every night for dinner? Uh, maybe you know, hopefully, maybe a few months. I don't know. Point point is, is that you now have disposable cash, right? The car is still operating. It don't look that great, but who gives a shit? I mean, it, if things are tough, you're gonna overlook a lot of stuff, right? I know I am. All of a sudden, shit that I thought was important, that ain't that important. Listen, I know when I when I lost my job, me and my wife, we bought we had bought our first house. I'm making a crap load of money back in like, I don't know, 2000, whatever it is. Great job, I had a car, this and that, blah, blah, blah. Things are going great, we buy the house. <clears throat> Six months later, I get I get laid off. The, the, the job collapses, they, they, they lose the contracts. I'm on the balls of my ass. I'm working. I got unemployment. I am scrambling, trying to dig up, you know, you know, pennies and dimes here. Well, let me tell you. First thing I did was go right to the right to the Rolodex. You know, goodbye to the landscaper. You know, goodbye to the the automatic uh, laundry service. You know, we started doing our own laundry again. So, point is, is a lot of that shit goes by the wayside, right? And the cars are no different. They're no different, folks. Right? I think we can all admit that to ourselves. If so. And I, listen, I, it's not even a matter of admitting it to yourself. I'm, I'm talking from facts here. I'm talking from experience, right? I worked in the insurance industry back starting in 86. In 87, the uh, stock market collapsed, right? I know it's not a big deal now. Looking back, people are probably like, wow, that was nothing, really. Well, it was a big deal in 87. Trust me. All right, people were losing their jobs. Things were really tough, all right? We had uh, pretty high inflation still and yada, yada. Point is, I'm working in the insurance industry. Guess what we saw? We started seeing a lot of people coming in with so-called, quote-unquote, vandalism claims. <laughs> all right? I got scratched all over the place. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, these are probably scratches that were on their, on their cars, you know, for, for years, right? And, and then somebody told them, well, you could put a cop claim in. So here are these people coming in. Well, guess what? Those cars never ended up in a shop. 
We never got called. Hey, I need more money to fix this. You screw me. I never, I never heard from these people again. They took the money and ran. All right, so what we're talking about here is a divergence, right? A divergence in, in industries, right? A need to and as need. Body shop is as need, right? right? Collision, collision industry is as need. It sucks, but that's just a reality. I, I work in that reality. Believe me, I understand. I worked in the insurance part and I saw it. But now I've been in on, for nine and a half years. I've been on the collision side and I, I see it. You know, I, I feel it. Right? We're, in, we're in economically tough times. Insurance rates, you know, I talked about this uh, in, on, in two episodes about the premiums have gone up just dramatically. All right, 49, almost 49% 49 since 2021. And, in, and this year alone, from January, they're up almost 18%. 18%, folks, from January 1st of this year. I don't know about you, even if I got a crap load of money, that's a big raise. That's a big increase. All right, I'm pretty pissed. All right, even if I have a lot of money, I'm pissed. Okay, especially if I have insurance company that I haven't put a claim in in 25 years and, I'm, and I just got four increases. I mean, come on. So with all this, this is a perfect storm against the collision industry. So you, but you need to be, all right, because it's a as need industry, we don't really think about it, right? We think about, we think about the auto, we think about the mechanical side, you're damn right, right? Cause no car, I can't get anywhere, I can't get to the job, I can't get what I need. Body work, meh, I don't know, right? <clears throat> I mean, really, I'm just saying. That fender, the door, eh, it looks like crap, but you know what? I don't give a shit. I'm going to live with it. You ain't living with a car that don't run, all right? Or a car that's not safe, all right? Or a car that can't pass inspection. So, as needed, must need, all right? Or necessary, as unnecessary, all right? Need to, as needed. So, what are we doing here? That crash course. What we're doing is we're letting you folks know that you need to overcome that though, okay? You need to overcome that, that philosophy, okay? That, that outlook with the collision industry. All right, I've talked about this many times. You followed me on the radio. I had a couple really cool episodes on that about how the, how the industries are divergent from each other, right? Both of them involve cars, both of them involve repairs, but one's as need and one's need to, right? So as needed, is collision. Need to is mechanical, right? As needed means guy goes down the road and gets hit in the ass and they hand, the, they hand, him, a, 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 they hand him a check for four grand and he's, you know, he's got the bumper, he's got a, this quarter. You've seen it. Come on, you've seen it on the road. We've all seen it. Come on. The guy driving down the road, he's all duct taped up, right? Or, or it's, all, it's all dented and you're laughing. You're like, oh, that guy got paid. Right? And he just said, oh, the hell with it. I wouldn't do that, but I mean, a lot of people do. And especially if you're in, you know, if you're in hard times. So, you know, how do we overcome that though, right? I think, as, I think as consumers, as customers, especially today when so many of us, so many more of us now own our cars, I think we need to, we need to tr kind of change that paradigm, right? We need to start trying to change that as consumers. Right? I really believe that. I mean, I'm not just sitting there blowing smoke up everybody's ass. I really believe that we need to take more of a personal interest in who's fixing our cars, and why they're fixing it the way they want to fix it. I forget the insurance company. That's a whole other load of shit, I mean, about what they want to do. And believe me when I tell you, folks, they don't want to do anything that's helping you, okay? They really don't. They want to do what's helping them. Now, they're not going to tell you that because they can't. It's, it's unethical and, in some instances, illegal, you know, if it's not consistent with New York State insurance law. But I'm here to tell you, all right, because yours truly worked in that industry almost 30 years, right? And I've said, you've heard me say this before. They don't actually have your back, folks. They really don't, all right? Find a good body shop, a trustworthy body shop, all right? A future-focused body shop like V&J. Did I have to mention V&J? Woo, we love V&J. V&J is our number one sponsor here at Crash Course, and V&J Auto Body is a future-focused shop. They are one of the largest shops in Long Island, all right? I should know I work there, all right? Um, we've made tremendous investments in people, products, all right, equipment, training, and our office staff. All right, just to mention a few, not to mention the infrastructure. Okay, we are currently in the process of completing a tremendous building. Um, you may have seen, uh, if you didn't go to YouTube, check it out. We did a really cool video, which, by the way, was with Barone Media. 
All right, those guys were great. We shot that video, uh, it's up on YouTube. It's, I think it's pretty cool, all right? We show you the building that's going up, tremendous building. All right, um, this thing's like 50,000 square feet. We have a 25,000 square foot facility next door. Folks, when I tell you V&J Auto Body is a state-of-the-art facility, it is a, a gem, a jewel in the industry, okay? It's a body shop that every other shop should look to for what the future of the industry should look like, all right? That's V&J Auto Body, all right? Um, go check them out. Go to vnjautobody.com. All right, there's a bunch of cool stuff there. I think there's even a you can take a virtual tour. Um, you can see some repairs in process. All right, we are the real deal. All right, so getting back to the central issue at hand here, which is what is educating yourself, right? Getting more, taking more of a personal interest, okay, in who's fixing our cars and where we're gonna get the car fixed because we all know where we're going with mechanical, right? We all do. Man, if the brakes. If tomorrow your wife comes screaming, oh my God, the car's not running, I don't, it's making, a, it's making a, a, whole, a, a noise, I don't know what's going on, you know, I, 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 got a, I blew the tire, and I, you know, whatever it is, right? Or, or your, kid, your kid says, oh my dad, I don't know what happened, you know, the, the wheels are grinding, they're making some kind of, you know, right way to go, man. Right way to go. We're going to Uncle Vinny's uh, auto repair, we're going to Tricky Dicks, we're going to uh, Skid Row Body, you know, mechanics, Wh whatever it is. Point is, is we all know where we're going, man. But now all of a sudden you get in an accident. Bam, car smashed up. All right, kids all upset. Oh, Dad, I don't know what the hell happened. I, you know, I lost my brain and I, I ran into a pole. It's, it's a mishmash, right? Let's face it, folks, okay? It's, it's a panic, right? It's a throw your hands in the air. You know, you, after you get done beating the crap out of your kid, you're like, holy shit, where the hell am I bringing this thing now? All right, let's face it. For most of us, that is a fact, all right? It's hands in the air, I don't know, what the hell do I do? And then, unfortunately today, you know, you call the insurance company and, hey, how you doing, Mr. Jones? Yeah, hey, we're here for you, boy, woo! We're gonna, you know, we're gonna help you. Yeah, they're gonna help you, they're gonna give it to you, all right? And you don't know any better because you didn't think that it was important enough to find out, you know, what a, a, what a, a trustworthy, professional, um, equipped shop okay like I just said about the future what that looks like or what that should look like all right and you didn't bother to look into that so now you're at the mercy of somebody else the insurance company unfortunately maybe right for the most part and they're gonna tell you ah, take it down the road there tricky takes all about it let me tell you boy these guys are great man they're gonna they're, yeah they're gonna take care of you boy Woo! oh really yeah yeah they're gonna do the right thing go over there we'll send the assignment there all you have to do is show up on oh, by the way a thousand dollar D make sure you pay that all right, but we're here to help you. You have any problems? Call us. We're going to help you. And off you go. And you go down to Tricky Dick's auto body. And Tricky Dick turns around. Hey, we got your assignment right here. It came right over on the, uh, on the email. Used to be fax. Right? And then one of, their, uh, one of their minions will come out, look at your car. and They're going to scrutinize your car. because Not because they're concerned, but because they want to make sure they get every little thing on that car. So next time if you make a claim, the insurance company can say, Look, we did a complete, in-depth, unrelated prior damage report, and all of this shit here that you now want to you want to claim, nah, it's not gonna work. Okay, and then you leave your car there, and next thing you know, there's a headache, right? There's some kind of problem. The parts that they want you to use are all bullshit parts. They put them on there. You go to pick up your car. You got a two-tone car. Or you got parts that don't really fit. And you complain to the body shop, and the body shop throws their hands in the air and says, Ah, I'm sorry, Mr. Jones, but, you know, this is what the insurance company pays for. I can't help you. And there you go, folks. It happens that quick. All right? And now you call the insurance company, because remember, they told you, right? Anything, you need anything, give us a call. And you call them up, and they're like, Oh, well, you got to go back to the body shop. I do? Yeah. They'll take care of everything. Well, you guys told me to go there. Yeah, we'll go back there. And then you go back there, and that guy looks at it, and he says, well, maybe I can make an adjustment. I can't do anything with the paint because they don't pay for blends, and they don't want to do anything else. So, And it's a shit show, and you're in the middle. And who's advocating for you? Who's standing up for you, right? Who's fighting the fight for you? Who's going to stand in your shoes? Not that guy. I've talked about this, folks. That ain't happening. That guy's going to go a little bit, and then when things really start to get interesting, I, I go, listen, man, I'm sorry, I'd really like to help you, but, uh, you know, they, they kind of, you know, winking and nod, he's winking and nodding and going like this, and you're like, what, what are you doing, what do you mean? Well, you know, they, 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 they send us work, 
You know, they, they pay us. Oh, okay. Well, what about me? Well, guess what? You're not really that important. You know why? Because you remember, you didn't go there. The insurance company told you to go there. So you're not really his customer, all right? You're the insurance customer's, insurance company's customer, all right? Folks, what I'm getting at here is don't be these, this person. Don't be that guy, don't be that girl, all right? Do your homework, go to collisionservicenetwork.com. Collisionservicenetwork.com, okay, is the parent company of Crash Course. All right, Crash Course is the voice, Collision Service Network is the boss. Go there, all right, check us out. It's amazing. We have a, a very detailed network of uh, body shops that are going to be willing to help you. They're going to represent your interests, not the interests of the insurance company. They're going to fix your car the way you want it, all right? And that's important, folks. It's very important. What I mean by that is if there's things on that car that you're concerned about, hey, our network shops are going to make sure that they, they deal with that concern, all right? So what are we getting at here to wrap things up? All right, what we're getting at here is we need you and me, consumers, all right, potential customers, we need to be more proactive when it comes to who's fixing our cars. When it comes to the body work, we already know about the mechanic. When it comes to the body work, we need to be more proactive. We don't want to be Mr. Jones. Kid came home, ran the car in the wall or something, or skidded into some, some guy, or you know, did a lane change and took three people out, whatever it is. Cars all whacked out, right? You got done beating the hell out of your kid, and now, and now you're standing there trying to figure out where to go, and you, and you call the insurance, and they tell you to go over here. Folks, you don't put, trust me, trust me, okay? Remember what I told you, what do we, what do, we do here, right? We're giving you information and knowledge you need and can use, and advice you can trust. Hence, trust me. I worked in that lovely industry, all right? I'm telling you the way it is, and the way it is is not the way you think it is. Especially today, this just shit keeps getting deeper and deeper with these guys. Folks, let me give you a little example about what I mean about the insurance guys are not really there for you, all right? You got guys like State Farm, Ball State, all right? The two, big, the two big guys on the block. These guys spend all day, what I mean these guys, the companies, they spend all day coming up with new ways to screw you, all right? That's right, you. Because when I'm negotiating with them and they tell me, oh, um, we're not paying for that anymore or we don't feel this is important, or we don't think that that needs to be done, or we don't, we don't agree that that needs to be replaced. All this bullshit, this is what, this is what body shops have to deal with. Now, because you came to V&J, I can assure you that the outcome is gonna be very positive, and we're gonna to get to where we need to get. You go to some other guy, I can't say that. But the point here is, the insurance companies are constantly looking for ways to screw you. Now, I've, I've, I've couched that, right? I've couched this issue, many times by saying insurance companies do one thing very well, right? What is it? Hello. They look for ways to cut costs when, where, and often. When, where, and often. Okay? And that means you, your claim, the negotiation process, what I like to say behind the scenes shenanigans, you know, all the bullshit they come up with, the, the bean count is, the, the middle managers, they got nothing else to do but they want to secure their job. So every year they roll out some they roll out some new, uh, some new ideas, and this is how we're going to do things now. Right, forget about Reg 64, forget about New York State Insurance Law, forget about the process. Don't, they don't give a shit. Okay? Now, how this impacts you and me is that ultimately you're responsible. Okay? Not me, the body shop. You are. You're responsible to pay for that. So when your insurance company is turning around telling you, hey, man, you need help, just give us a call, and then they're screwing you. Right? They don't want to pay for these different things. Now, any other shop would turn around and say, I can't do that, right? Go to the, go to the insurance shop. What are the example I just used? Mr. Jones ends up at Tricky Dick's Auto Body, right? the insurance company shop, and he goes to get his car, and it's a two-tone car, right? Because they don't pay for that. And Tricky Dick's Auto Body's not going to do it for you. v and is going to do it, right? Because we fix the car the right way, right? We fix it for you, right? So that means if I have a... If I have a, a situation where I can't get a color match on a bumper cover to, to a sheet metal part, I'm going to do it. All right? Now, I'm going to try like hell to get paid for it, okay? but I might not. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to do it. Because right? in the end, our reputation all right, and our, our work ethic okay, and our guarantees and warranties, they're on the line. All right? And that's what we consider important. We consider you the customer important, not the insurance company. You go to an insurance company body shop. Yeah, I can't. You can't. You can't say that. I don't. I don't know what they consider important. 
I mean, I mean, personally, I think they consider important all the insurance companies, right? Because without them, they're not in business. I don't need them. Okay? I don't need the V&J doesn't need them, and any shop on our network doesn't need them. Okay? They do not need the insurance industry. Now, there's a lot of guys out there that, and, and, and listen, I know guys that, that their, their fathers and, and you know, their, their other generations would probably roll over in their graves, right? Because some of these guys have given in to the, you know, the almighty, you know, God of the dollar, all right? I don't know why, they just have. I think it's bullshit. I think it's the easy way out. I think it's just being lazy. They just gave up on themselves. They gave up on their business, and they said, ah, what the hell with it? You know, we're, we're gonna we're gonna cave. We're gonna we're gonna turn around. We're gonna bend over, and we're gonna tell the insurance companies to let us have it. So, all right, not B and J Auto Body though. All right, that's not gonna happen. Never gonna happen. Okay, we're blazing the trail, folks. All right, we're setting the example. We're setting the pace. All right, B and J Auto Body, and I use B and J as an example because we are who we are. Now, on our network, at CollisionServiceNetwork.com, there are many other shops similar to us. All right, shops that that agree with. All right, and that preached the same, the same message. All right, but uh, to wrap this all up, the takeaway here is the takeaway here is this, folks. Okay, we all know what we're doing when the mechanical breaks down. We we most of us don't know what the hell we're doing when the when the collision breaks down. All right, and that needs to stop. Okay, that needs to stop. You need to get more involved. You need to be as involved on the collision side as you are on the mechanical side. All right, and that might mean, you know, stopping by a shop and just, you know, walking in. Hey, how you doing, man? I, li I live in the area. I just, you know, I don't really know much about the industry. And, uh, you know, I just want to check it out. I'm thinking of maybe using you guys. God forbid I need that. Yeah, no problem. Listen, you come into my shop and ask me that, I'm going to be thrilled. All right? I'm going to get you stuff. I'm going to need stuff to go home with. I I'll show you all of our certifications. All right? By the way, V&J Auto Body is the most certified facility on Long Island. All right? Or actually, I'm sorry, in Suffolk County. Um, we continue to grow in that area. We just became Range Rover and Jaguar certified, Rivian certified. All right, big stuff, big stuff. Um, yeah, so, I mean, you know, you might want to just do that, right? Or you might, like I said, go to CollisionServiceNetwork.com. Go there. That doesn't take much. CollisionServiceNetwork.com. Go check us out. Go look at the network. Find somebody. You'll, pro you'll probably be amazed. You'll find a shop that's in your, in your neighborhood or maybe in your vicinity. And go, go over and visit them. You know, stop in, right? Because we do it with the mechanical, and we need to start doing it with the collision, folks. Trust me. Okay, these cars, these cars are, are these cars are not going to get any simpler. They're going to continue to be advance with materials, with technology packages, with safety features, um, with the suspension and the mechanical. All right, uh, well, mechanical. Well, we do handle mechanical, but with the suspension, with the chassis. All this stuff is going to be fine. And then the EVs. If you drive an EV, holy shit. If you drive an electric vehicle, folks, a Rivian, a Tesla, a Lucid, um, anything along those lines, even like the new Cadillac, the Lyric, you need to really make sure you're dialed in. All right? You need to be dialed in. All right? And I don't give a shit. Listen, I get it if you're leasing it. Ah, pfft, who gives a shit, right? I'm running over there. Well, remember, you're responsible for that property. You're renting their property. Leasing is renting. Okay, it's a glorified rental. So you're renting somebody's property, car, truck, whatever the hell you decide to waste your money on. <laughs> now, as I said, waste your money on. Um, you're still responsible. So you want to make sure you know who's fixing your car. All right? So I think we're going to wrap it up there. I hope everybody got a little something out of that. Hey, folks, listen, today is September 10th. All right? It's the day before September 11th. All right? And we all know what that is. All right, horrible, horrible day. You know, they said that uh, December 7th would live in infamy. I think that's how FDR started out his famous speech. Well, I'm going to tell you this. I think September 11th should live in infamy. Even more. Right? Even more so because it was, it was civilians that were killed. Over there, it was some civilians, unfortunately. But it was a lot of military. Now, I, I'm ex-military. I can tell you, you sign up for that. Right? It's not, it's not great. Unfortunately, when you sign on the dotted line, you raise your hand, you're basically saying, yeah, I'm, I'm cool with getting killed. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, same thing in the fire department, right? I did eight and a half years in the fire department. Same thing. Hey, no problem. Burn me up. All right. Um, Yo, that never happens. But, you know, and, and inside we all, we all know as a soldier or as a, um, you know, as a fireman, we all know that that's a risk, right? It could happen. But you're comfortable with that, right? Because you're doing a good thing. You're doing the right thing. So, uh, you know, September 11th, right? 
everybody just you know wherever you're gonna be just uh, just remember remember that day all right remember I know a lot of people want to push that kind of shit down like way down I right? push this shit way down right there's a comedian that does that's amazing way down all right, and everybody wants to move on from stuff today. That's the whole, you know, that's the way it is. We want to forget, all right? Oh, yeah, well, it happened, but, you know, bullshit, okay? You never want to forget that. All right, that, that was horrendous what went on. And, uh, and folks, let me tell you, I don't know, what, it doesn't matter what political stripe you are. You should be very concerned as an American citizen. Forget about the political labels and all this other bullshit and everything, whatever other gender thing you got going on. I don't give a shit. Bottom line is we all live in America. We all live here, all right? And at the, at, the, at the least, we should all be demanding that we're safe and secure. And I gotta tell you, folks, I don't think that that's what it is. I don't think we are anymore, all right? I don't think we are anymore. I think there's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of crap going on under the, under the surface and it just hasn't, hasn't percolated up. All right, remember September 11th, right? It was a beautiful day that day. Sunny, blue skies. I was heading out to the wineries for the day with my wife and then, you know, bam! Right, the, the, the sky fell in. So that's how quick it can happen, folks. Bam, it can go from that to, you know, almost looking like hell, hell on earth. Um, and that's why, you know, we can never forget that, all right? So that's my September 11th uh, speech. I also want to just say a little something here, all right? Look, I know this show's about insurance and collision and everything else, and that's cool. But I like to interject a little, a little edginess to the show as well. And, I want people to respond. I want people to comment on it, right? Um, September 10th, so this is September 10th, and tonight is a debate between um, President, uh, ex-President Trump and uh, Vice President Kamala Harris, right? I don't know, again, I don't know what political stripe anybody is out there. I'm just going to tell you what, how I feel about it, all right? This is how I feel about the way all this shit is going on, all right? Now, I know a lot of people are going to disagree, and that's cool. That's the old America, man. Disagree. All right? The problem is that today, when you disagree, all right, you get attacked and all this other crap. Right? We all know. We've, we've seen what's gone on for the last uh, eight years. Um, but in the old America, the America that I grew up in, all right, that was cool. That was, that was American. All right? You could disagree, all right? we, but we always agreed on what? We always agreed on what it was to be an American. That was the one thing that anchored everybody at its core. The other, sh the other minutia and everything, that was always bullshit. I mean, we, all, we always were bullshitting back and forth over that, all right? But at the end of the day, we all agreed on what, what it was to be an American, what our culture was, what our value system was, what our economic system was, all right? And we were proud of that, and we embraced it, and we thought that was great, and, and we lived it. All right? That's all gone. That shit's all being blown up. All right, and I just want to say this on, on that on that subject, and I'm going to wrap this up. I promise. Okay, I don't want to get too long in the tooth yet. You know, my teeth my teeth don't get long at all anymore. All right, they're all falling out at 62. Um, anyway, so I just want to say this because it's very important. It's a very very serious matter. Right, if you're a young person out there, listen. I was young once too. I was in military school when Ronald Reagan got elected. You know, it was the first time I could vote and everything. I get it. You know, it's, it's not as critical. You're young, you're looking at your entire life down the road, and you're like, eh, all right, I understand, but, you know, all right, I don't know what this person's going to do for me. Um, but here it is, okay? And you're not going to hear this from anybody else, right? I know I'm a nobody with my little podcast here, but whosoever, who, whosoever ears this is reaching, all right, I want you to listen up, all right? Because you're not going to hear it put this way, okay? The debate tonight is about two distinctly different views on what kind of America we're going to be. And don't, anybody, all this other bullshit about, you know, well, you know, they just want to do things differently. No, no, no. Folks, and go look in this. This is what we don't do as Americans anymore. Okay, we don't do this. We don't do this as, as educated people, as intelligent human beings. We don't do this. We don't go look into shit. Go check this out. If you want to vote for, for the other, if you want to vote for one guy or one girl, whatever, you want to vote for Kamal, or you want to vote for Trump, you should go investigate them. And at the end of the day, if you did your bulwark and you looked into everything that that person stands for, everything that they told you, and you did your research and you looked into their background, you looked into what was being said, and you were, ever, you were able to either confirm or deny that, and you still feel like, hey, that's my, that's my guy or that's my girl, great. Go for it. Knock yourself out. Cast the vote. But you know what, folks? Nobody's doing that. Most people don't give a shit today. 
they don't bother to go look into things on their own. They listen to mass media. They listen to some some jerk off on some radicalized uh, podcast or or some other bullshit, you know, on the internet. All these stupid little news things and that. It's baloney, folks. And again, I don't give a shit if you if you you know gender trans, transgender, you know uh, LGBTQYXYZ. I I don't even care. I don't give a shit. All that doesn't matter. You know, despite what you were told, that don't matter, folks. Nobody really cares. The only thing that cares at the end of the day, I mean, the only thing that matters, and the only thing that should care to you at the end of the day, no matter what 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 what, what type of life you live in. The only thing that should matter to you is, is that person that you're thinking about getting behind, are they being truthful, factual, okay? Are they credible, all right? And do they have a constructive purpose for our country going forward, all right? Is what they're telling you something that's gonna benefit you and benefit the country? And I'm not talking pie in the sky shit. Right? Anybody that tells you right, we're gonna we're gonna guarantee fifty thousand dollars worth down payment and I remember when Obama was running that girl running around saying he's gonna give me a phone and a mortgage. That girl never got shit. All right? Politicians don't give you anything other than agita and lies. Go look into shit by yourself. Please. Go investigate stuff on your own. Right? Do the legwork, man. We do the legwork for everything else, right? I told you I'm on YouTube all the time, YouTubing for this band and that band and how to play this drum fill and I do it. But somehow when it comes to something as critical as this, we don't want to take the time. Bullshit. Take the time, folks. Stop being bamboozled. Stop being bullshitted. Stop being hoodwinked. Start looking into stuff, all right? Because I'm going to tell you something right now before I sign off here. You're not going to hear this anywhere. This is simply this, and it's no more complicated. This is simply, are we going to go forward as a Marxist, socialist co uh, country, right? Or are we going to go forward as a free, democratic, republic, capitalist country? That's it. All the other stuff is minutia. All the other bullshit you hear from the Democrats, all right, it's, it's all minutia. All right, from the Republican side and the conservative side, that's their thing, and this is this is this is their thing. All right, that's it. It's as simple as that. Despite what the mass media might be trying to convince you otherwise, their system is at best a socialist system. At worst, it's a Marxist totalitarian system. All right. The other side wants to make sure that we remain a democratic. We are a democratic republic, folks. We're not a democracy. We're a democratic republic. Again, please go look into this. Go look in. Go 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 look into definitions. Go look up the history of the United States. We were never a democracy. We are a democratic republic. All right, that's what we are. Constitutional republic. If you want to, if you want to take it to the extreme, that's what we are. We're not a democracy. All right. We're not a. Uh, we're not a. We're not a, we're a dictatorship. All right. We're not a parliamentary system or any other. Thing in between. We are a constitutional republic, a democratic republic. The other side would have us become, I don't know what, right? but it would be socialist. They want, um, at a minimum, they want to they want direct and control industry, right? which by the way is the definition of fascism. So when you hear them throw around fascism, which nobody bothers to even look up, fascist countries are countries that remain, okay now, you know, wake up, oh, a fascist country is one in which the government embraces free enterprise but directs the industry. That's fascism. Okay? It's a directed industry with capitalist principles. Right? You had that in Nazi Germany. You had that in Italy for a while, too. Right? Trust me, folks. Because that is not what they're doing here. Right? They want a socialist model. Right? They, want, they want socialism and they want a Marxist ideology. Right, which is going to bring forth totalitarianism, and you can see it all over, folks. Right, there's a lot of totalitarian, very, very intolerant stuff. Not a lot of, not a lot of tolerant. Right, that's it. That's the. At the end of the day, it's just what I just told you. It's one or the other. It's as simple as that. So if you like that, if you like socialism, Marxism, you think that's cool. You think you want to live under that. You think you want to be live under a totalitarian society. 
right? Where every aspect of your life is managed because that's what they want. They want a, they want a, they want a cadre of professionals. This is the panacea that they see, the utopia, right? They want a panel of professionals to manage every aspect of our lives, right? And that's what, the, that's what they look at. That's their utopia. Look it up. Check it out. Go to Woodrow Wilson. He was the United States president. He's the first president that gave us all this shit. That's what he embraced. <clears throat> right? They want. They basically want. They want a, a government of experts that are going to tell you and me how we're going to do everything. All right? It's all bullshit, folks. Go do your own research. Go look into things, please. Stop swallowing the Kool Aid. All right, and stop. Uh, you know, stop being a cheerleader for these dumbass politicians. All right, let's get smarter than that. Let's make sure that we're choosing people. All right, because we really understand what they stand for and what they're doing. Forget the cheerleading. Forget the bullshit. To get the fancy cliches and all the promises and all the giveaways. It's all bullshit. All right? There's nothing free out there. That's it. All right. I'll see you in the next episode.